And joining us now for more is Mary Beth Long, former Assistant Secretary of Defense and former Chair of NATO's Nuclear Committee, speaking to us from Washington, D.C. And Mary Beth, thanks for coming. You knew, you, you knew Donald Rumsfeld. You worked with him. Tell us a little about your own experiences and your, your thoughts on the man. Well, he was certainly a friend of Israel. Um, Mr. Rumsfeld or Secretary Rumsfeld was very much like the portrait that you, you just showed. He didn't back down. He was known for his desire to tussle, to be held accountable, to take on tough issues. Uh, he would admit mistakes. Uh, he accepted the responsibility as no other did for the Abu Ghraib. He, I think, faced very, very difficult circumstances where from a militarily we were very successful in the Afghan and Iraqi wars, but what we hadn't figured out was that it was a different kind of fight and how to take that military initial successes and turn them into a long-term success. And sadly, I think that his legacy will be much more focused on the detrimental impact of our policies and those endeavors in the regions. And that's a bit of a shame, frankly. Right. Let me ask you, he, although he shared some of the, pol the same policies, he was never really identified with the neoconservatives, both within and without the Bush administration, who argued for the invasion of Iraq and thought it could be some kind of transformative uh, event on the region. Uh, and they talked about establishing democracy in Iraq. I, Donald Rumsfeld wasn't identified with that group. What, what, did you ever hear him discuss about how he thought the overthrow of Saddam Hussein would impact on the region as a whole? Actually, we did have that conversation once. We spent uh, Christmas in Iraq together, and um, on the way there was a conversation about what are we doing here and what do we say to these troops who are not with their family? I think Secretary Rumsfeld was there because his president told him to be there and that he ultimately believed that the overthrow of Saddam Hussein was something that the Iraqi people wanted, that they deserved and that we were obligated to deliver. What came after that, frankly, he was quite blunt in making it very clear that he didn't think that was a military task. He thought that that was something that fell to the Iraqi people and something that fell to the other instruments of power in the United States. Um, that that was not something that the US could deliver through his troops and through the Department of Defense. So he did not see himself as a tool to bring democracy to cultures or religions or peoples who perhaps were not prepared um, to pay the price or even prepared culturally for it. You're right. Right. I, I mean, a different view, Colin Powell later said the famous quote, if you broke it, you you own it. And of course, there's some uh, disagreement on that. Now, you mentioned Donald Rumsfeld as an ally of Israel, a supporter of Israel. Not every defense secretary uh, in the U.S. was uh, uh, could make that claim. Uh, I noticed there was a uh, looking doing my research in 2002. He spoke to Pentagon employees and he actually said that uh, I'm going to quote him my feeling about the so-called occupied territories that there was a war and Egypt, Jordan, Syria lost a lot of real estate to Israel because Israel prevailed in that conflict. He had a quite a little different view than the prevailing view at the time, certainly it seems, even in the, the Bush administration. He did. I mean, he was, a, in, in some respects, people seem to view him as not being nuanced and he was definitely not nuanced in a lot of his views. That being one of them, uh, there was a war somebody lost and somebody won and Israel won. So they were entitled to the spoils of war as any winner would be and certainly as we would assume of ourselves. But my experience with him was that if you had a good argument and you made a good case and you stood your ground, he was willing to listen. And in fact, it was the nuances that I think made him as successful bureaucratically as he was in getting his points of view and his positions across. Right. I'm just going to read Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, the former prime minister, also put out a statement today uh, in which he said, sad and to hear about the passing of Donald Rumsfeld, an American patriot and a staunch supporter of Israel who understood the need for bold leadership in the global war against terror. And, uh, you know, it's interesting if, for example, had the U.S. stopped at the invasion of Afghanistan, maybe we'd be viewing his legacy quite different. And that was unprecedented time to go into Afghanistan and try to root out al-Qaeda. I think you're right. And I think I would even go further. I think there's an argument to be made had we stopped after uh, the initial 100 days, maybe three or four months, 
into um, into Baghdad um, and and been much more wise and much more nuanced about what that would look like uh, had we even gone there. And I, I don't want to revisit the case about whether um, whether or not the war was justified, it happened. I think that he would be forgiven for a lot of things, but um, he did accept responsibility and was, I think, very troubled at the end that uh, we were leaving basically Iraq in the hands of, at best, incompetence, at worst, Iranians. Right. A, a complex figure. We've only even just touched on his uh, legacy in this region. So there's, of course, so much more uh, to Donald uh, Rumsfeld. Mary Beth Long, thank you for joining us on I-24. Thank you for reaching out.